Alrighty y'all, uh, welcome back to the channel here. Um, we're on part three of this Troy built. It is a Troy built Bronco with the automatic hydrostatic transmission. Actually it's not a hydrostatic, it's just kind of a glorified um, regular transmission that MTD puts in with the foot pedal. It's got an 18 and a half horse Briggs in it. I built in 2004, kind of already gone over that in the first previous two parts. Um, as you can see, I've got the hood on it and everything, um, and we left off with me driving it. Now, y'all saw that um, I had a broken spring that ended up causing issues with the blade, or excuse me, the um, drive belt not engaging, the secondary drive belt. The primary drive belt was fine, the secondary drive belt was the one that wasn't engaging because of the um, tensioner spring. Um, for the gear shifter and so we put that in uh, that ended part two and y'all saw me driving this thing around so now we're on part three part three is going to consist of basically just putting the deck back on it and cutting it or and um cutting with it uh making sure that everything works on it so i've got the deck over here it is this is a 42 inch cut as well um so everything on the deck was fine it just needed kind of a good refresh like a um obviously a deck belt which is what I've got here um, still waiting on my blades still waiting on the new blade nuts because um, if y'all saw um, I had to uh, cut the blade nuts off and uh, I was able to thankfully save the spindle threads good enough to where I can reuse them you can see a little bit of damage and whatnot right there but um, Everything else is fine on it. They still tighten, loosen, and all that. Even after I cut the old blade nuts off, they were still loosening and tightening. So I'm not really worried about that. Saved me about 40 to $50 in blade spindles. Or in deck spindles. Um, so I'm happy about that. But the, uh, the, the deck belt here, excuse me, I ended up, I don't really have to do this with many of the other mowers that I've had to work on. But I had to with this one, I had to take the pulleys off, these two middle pulleys off. You see where I've got some play in here with them. This one I actually have taken completely off. Which all it is, is it's a 9 16 inch bolt and there's a nut on the bottom. That which I've already taken off right there, 9 16 inch nut goes there. You just pull the pulley off. And these pulleys are just fine I mean they're working as they should I've tested the deck it was quiet so um, let me grab my tripod here which is just a couple of rolls of tape and I'll put y'all right here as I put the um, deck belt stuff back on it's terribly hard um, just I got an impact impact makes this up job a lot easier it helps prevent from uh, stripping threads and stuff too so just remember it goes around here and it'll go up to the front pulley and then it'll actually come back around we're going to go ahead and put this belt on right here but it looks like there's two slots this one was in the um, slot closest to the other pulley so that's where I'm going to put this one back Put the wrench there, one sixteenth bottom end top, pop this back on. We're not working on crazy things here, so it doesn't have to be crazy tight. I will leave those up with some PE blaster just so that they're a little bit more freely moving. Again, these spindles really haven't moved too much in a while, so uh, they might be a little tighter than they usually are. The bottom one over here, I'll show you. I kind of gave y'all a hint in part two, but the bottom one, the bottom bolt actually goes through the deck believe it or not down 
under the deck and is held on by a nut. So I have a parts box over here that has the actual nut in it that I need. There's no washer or anything associated with it. And it's this nut right here. It's the one that goes under the deck. So I'm going to put that nut, I'll show you all here, right there. Do the same deal with the rat with the impact and the wrench. And let y'all see that as well. <clears throat> I misplaced my socket. Let me find it real quick and then we will oh there it is. I love repair work sometimes. The tools you have all of a sudden just disappear. Okay. Alright, so that's the way the deck belt goes. Um, when I get the blades in, I'll get the blades in and then I'll put the blades on before I put the deck belt back on and uh, I'll do that and uh, you know we'll see what we got here coming up uh, so that's gonna be kind of the next step I might I'm gonna see because y'all heard it, it's kind of skipping and hopping jumping all over the place whenever it's idling I don't really like that I'm still kind of on the fence as to whether or not I want to work on that or not um, it's really easy to do, uh, just taking the carb and stuff back off, it's really not that involved, I just sometimes get a little lazy it seems. Um, there's a low side jet right there that sometimes, that Chinese carburetor seems like it's very, uh, that needs a low side jet uh, drilled out because I don't think it's uh, big enough and so We'll do that um, if I find the thing isn't running any better. So that might be coming up if I decide to do that. But um, we'll get the deck on here in a few minutes uh, in the video. I'm still waiting on the parts, like I said. And um, we will uh, give this thing a test mode. All right, so in my determination here, I found out that the brakes are also not working on this thing. Um, not that big of a deal. I've done a brake rebuild on a Craftsman before. The MTDs look like they're a very similar setup. I was able to figure out how to tighten the brake pedal, but now um, I guess there's too much resistance and whatnot. It's not allowing the brake to enact. Um, whenever I tighten this to try and tighten up the pads, it, it, won't, it won't move. Whenever I loosen this up, it's kind of adjustment bolt there. It won't move as well. Um, one thing I did learn how to tighten up the brake pedal is under here. There's this uh, nut, as you can see. I'll show you where it is in relation to that spring I put in. This nut right here actually will tighten up the uh, blade brake, or excuse me, the brake. So it will have more pedal travel and all that good stuff. As you can see, it's pulling the spring some now too. So we're it's in a lot better shape than we were a little bit earlier. Um, Go ahead and tighten it up a little bit more. So that helped a little bit. Now I'm going to take a couple of 3 8 Well, that's the 3 8 7 16 uh, I think it's a 7 16 or a half right there. I'm going to take this assembly off and then we'll work on the rest. See what we've got with this brake assembly. Clean it up. All right, so the I took this off just goes on like that right and i took it off and look at all the gunk that's behind here it's just a, a crazy amount um that would explain why they're probably not working just look at all that gunk there it's built up over the course of time so i'm going to take a screwdriver here and i'll get most of this off clean it up you see like, the brake pads in pretty good shape here so I'll clean this up get it on and hopefully we'll have some brakes 
after that. Like I said, it's just a, it was actually a half inch and a couple of three eighths got me off. So clean this up, um, put this back together. And I think what I'm going to do is actually take this bar off and I'm going to tighten it some, um, because the blade really not, the bar is really not moving that far. The travel is not very far. It's got a lot of slack in it and there's no really adjustment point on it. Wow. The sun's bad. There's no real adjustment point on it, so I'm going to shorten it up a little bit and see if that'll help us out a little bit. All right, so I'm under the mower here, and I wanted to show you the other area where you got to take this linkage off. It's actually right there. You see that pin? So I got to do is take some needle noses or something of that nature, get up there and pull that pin out. And, uh... do it off camera because I'm gonna need two hands I think but just pull that pin out and uh, once you get that pin out you're able to slide this to the right here looking under the mower and then we'll get this thing out and I'll shorten it up a little bit that way there's not so much play in the play in it I've cleaned up the brakes so hopefully those will work like they're supposed to and uh, we'll get this thing on the roll rolling up here all right, so after the whole unfortunate aspect of trying to get this fixed, I have determined that I think the bullet, that the, um, you see that the um, spindle there is moving and the, the brakes aren't moving. So I have a feeling that the brakes have been uh, stripped out of the little pad uh, rotor type deal there. And so, what I did though is I tightened up the brake pedal and so the parking brake works. Now this, if this was a regular like gear operated riding mower, then this would be a pretty big deal. But since this is the hydrostatic, it's not because this will actually slow, you know, pulling the pedal back will actually slow the um, mower down here. Got it kind of on a and actually, I think that might be the stop for the throttle that I was messing with earlier. With the nut, which I think it is, because you pull this out and I think it might go faster. Let's see. I never really worked on one of these MTDs. This is kind of an experimental thing here for me. I don't think it is. But we'll see. Um, I'll get it on the ground and I'll let y'all know if it uh, has anything to do with the brake or anything like that. I know it goes with the tensioner spring here. So um <clears throat> might just be there for decoration. You never know with these MTD things. Um, but I just hate these brake designs because they are just the worst. And they put them on all the Broncos and all the ones that have this semi-automatic transmission or transaxle in them. And they're just not the best so uh, let me get this thing off some jacks and we'll uh, see what we got here so the brakes I knew I couldn't give up I knew it was something simple it ended up being something simple it ended up being that I put the rotor on backwards so the rotor wasn't hitting the splines the splines are fine you see it moving now then I hit the brake and we're not freewheeling anymore so brake I'm pushing it pushing it it's in neutral it's not going anywhere so brake is fixed I'm very happy because that uh, means that everything will be fixed on this mower whenever I get it done uh, quick note on it running I put some more gas in it so I guess the gravity feed kind of has a thing to do with the amount of gas that gets in the mower um, the gravity feed and uh, so I put some more gas in it it's running a little bit better I'm not going to worry about fixing the little surging while it's uh, in idle and anything like that. I think it's going to be just fine. Um, especially when somebody puts a full tank in it and be plenty of gas going to it. Should minimize the issue, that issue, uh, because there's more fuel gravity fed to flow in, so it'll probably flow a little bit better and run a little bit better. But I'm going to do off camera a tire tube on the right front. Um, like I said, I'm still waiting on the parts for this deck we'll put the deck on and uh we will uh give this thing a test mode hopefully send it on down the line 
All right, so the mailman ended up uh, bringing me some gifts. Uh, of course, I paid for them, as I always do. Um, blade nut, blade nut. I got two blades, but I just want to kind of show y'all. I bought, I, I don't have any particular, you know, blade manufacturer that I choose over the other. It's basically, if I get on eBay slash Amazon, I just pick the cheapest one. But I just want to compare these two side by side. You'll see how, well, maybe I'll go this way with it with the lift and whatnot, you see how much beefier that one on the right is from the one on the left? Pretty nice. Um, I guess we're going to a high lift blade from a mulching blade, it almost looks like. So that might be have something to do with it. But these are these weigh about twice as much as the as these blades do. So it's kinda interesting. I put some anti seize on the threads here. Hopefully to prevent um, what I had to do to get these blades off, although it wasn't the worst thing in the world. So now it's just a matter of putting the blades on the correct way. Which would be not that way. It should be that way. Fitting them in the star bit. So obviously the lift is going up on the blade, so that's a big giveaway as to what side you need to do. Obviously I'm going to tighten that down with an impact um, and a little bit of torque with 15 16 so I'll do the other side. Um, and I will catch y'all when I get this mower, or when I'm about to put this deck back on the mower. So putting this deck back on, there are a couple things that I wanted to kind of note. Um, as I'm doing this, first off, and if anybody wants to correct me, I don't see any sort of adjustment for the rear of this deck on this Troy Belt slash MTD. Um, if anybody, oh, never mind. There's, there it is, right there. It's actually on the physical deck itself on this side. Um, and then, so the deck, the deck actually adjustment looks like it's right here on it, on this side, and on this other side here, let me see if there's one on this side, I did not notice the physical deck adjustment on the right side of this mower, so, I don't see one over here, it looks like your right rear is fixed and your left rear is going to be the side that you adjust if you need to adjust it up and down, and it looks like... It's a bolt and a nut, and you just take take it out and slide it in the appropriate slot that you want it to be in. Um, I'll get to that in just a second if I have to level it out. But the other thing is, I would attach the front first and attach the rear last because um, I attached the rear first. And what I ended up having to do, and it's not a big deal, is I ended up having to unscrew that entire front assembly there. Um, take the nuts off of it and take that little mounting point circle thing off of it there to where it fits in the groove as you can see right there uh, not a big deal I'm going to take my three quarter inch deep well socket and uh, three eighths inch ratcheting wrench because that's the best that I have here and we're going to um, Tighten this up, and what I'll show you, I'll put you on the tripod here so I'm not putting you all around. Um, so what I'm going to do is just tighten it up, tighten up the nut, and uh, you'll see the deck raise. I've got it at its highest position now, and the goal is to get the deck... Uh, maybe not 100% level... But it's to get it to where it's maybe just a smidge lower in the front than it is in the back. So there's two nuts that go to this. Uh, so tighten the first one down and the second is a locker nut. So it doesn't go, so the nut on the front doesn't loosen any. So we're going to just see this. Yeah. 
we'll te check on the sides. Remember, you don't want to go so high up. think I'm about where I need to. I might back it off a might back it off a turn or two. That's actually right on I think. I'm gonna back it off two turns. Right about there. We'll put this back on. And y'all probably saw that deck raise when I did that whenever I did that. Putting the locker nut on. Both of those nuts are on now. Now the next thing to do, which I have done in the past, and still I'm using my old fashioned way of doing this, which, you know, I guess works. I haven't been able to check it. Check my work because I had, grass doesn't grow in the winter and I just started working on these things after the grass stopped growing in preparation for the spring. But I usually put this oil filter under here. It's a ST3614 Supertech oil filter. A lot of times I'll just place that under there. What I do is I measure the four corners. I'll try to show y'all with this. Here we go. So I'll pull the blades around. And I prefer the blades to be kind of at the very lowest be right on top of the oil filter you see right here so this one is this one is good blade breaks on that's why i'm having trouble so this one's good on this side it's kind of the right height now and i have new blades so i know they're even now let me check the front here and it's just a 10 it's hitting right on the top of the oil filter box if i check the back it's just a tinge higher than the oil filter box. So that's right on the money. I wanted it, you know, about an eighth inch lower in the front than in the back because if you hit something with the deck, it's not gonna, it has a lesser chance of going under the deck and hitting the blades if you have the front of the deck a little bit lower than the back. Because if you have it, if you have it like this, oop, no, if you have it like this, it's almost like, you know, an open mouth, so to speak, for some hard objects that may be just tall enough to clear the front, but it'll hit in the back, and then you just have a nightmare of bent blades and broken deck and a bunch of other type of deal. So I'm going to compare it with the um, left side over here and just kind of work it until it's even. If this is not even, I'll come back and I'll show you how to adjust the back side of the deck, but presuming that if you look across the front of the deck here, the deck does not look like it got beat up. I mean, this, if you look at this mower, I'm just about to have it ready, hopefully. Very good shape overall. I'm very happy with it. Um, so I'm going to finish leveling the deck. I'll get it out here, and I am going to show you all that the brakes work, because I haven't shown you all that with the mower on and running. Uh, so I can take that little bungee off. That was, was kind of my cheat, you know, cheat device to have it running when with me not on it. Um, and the and the brake off. And we'll uh, test this thing out. Hopefully give it a final test and uh, send it on down the line here very soon. Alright, so I think I got it. This really isn't too bad. What I did is I disconnected the um, this side of the mower deck from the um, the bracket that holds it on to the mower and what you do is there's a half inch here and you loosen it up just a little bit and then you can take this nut and you can just kind of move it up and move it down where you want the um, leveling agent to be and so I want it I basically want it I think all the way down there but that's just the gist of leveling this deck it's really not too bad because it's not like a little step ladder type thing so Kind of neat. Um, 
So I'm gonna fiddle with this, but that's how you adjust the back side of these sticks. Kinda cool. Um, it, it is a shame that there's not really a, an adjustment on the other side, but we're talking about a Troy built Bronco here, not a, um, I don't know, garden tractor, John Deere, anything like that. So, although all the other Craftsmen and stuff like that have them on both sides, this one does not. So keep that in mind if you buy an MTD. However, overall I found, as you can see, this really has not been that difficult to work on in terms of like replacing springs and stuff like that. The deck belt was marginally complicated, but I'll live with it. Um, so yeah, let me work on the, getting this settled and um, get it level and then we'll uh, give it a test mo. All right, so here it is, um, all done. I've taken it out. I've already taken pictures of it. And I was trying to figure out how much I got in the mower here. I've got about $100 in purchase price. Um, the deck belt was a little over 10. Uh, the blades and the blade nuts were about 20, give or take. Uh, about 25, so it'll be about 135. Um, I had a spring uh, for the transaxle, which is about, again, about eight or ten dollars. So I'll say about one forty-five. Battery is about twenty-five. So about a hundred and seventy dollars into this. Um, maybe one seventy-five. One account. Well, a tire tube as well. So one eighty. About a hundred eighty-five dollars, roughly, give or take. Now, this mower came on the same load as this gray craftsman back here y'all saw me do a while back uh, again this is winter time i haven't sold anything i wait until first week in march to sell but i probably got about 80 some odd dollars in that mower uh roughly and i'll probably sell it for 300. i should sell this one i was going to sell it for 400 but this thing turned out really nice. I don't think there are any problems with it. We're about to test the brake and stuff out. The only one thing I don't really like, well, two small things. One is hesitates a little bit when it cranks because of what I think is the worn cam loads because I did a valve adjustment on it. Runs, runs good, especially even with that Chinese carb. It runs good once, as long as you don't let the fuel get below out of a quarter of a tank and then it'll start surging pretty bad. Um, this gear shift is kind of loose. I don't really know how to fix it to where it will not be so loose but it doesn't pop out of gear or anything like that so that was my main concern and i am going to drive it around some to make sure it doesn't pop out of gear it's just just from you sorry for that loud clanging i'm gonna um, sit y'all down and we're gonna um, do the traditional blowing off the pine straw here in just, uh, just a second hopefully if all goes well cane till it's warmed up. It'll still surge a little bit, but what Nikki carburetor doesn't surge, you know? Let it warm up, it'll get a little bit better. Couple things I want to test out. You see the parking brakes hold great. It wasn't holding at all earlier, so whatever I did to that fixed it. Let me just make sure of one other thing here. While, while it's running, we're going to make sure that the battery is uh, getting charged by the stator slash coil, whatever you want to call it. Thank 
2.28, that's good enough. Sometimes you like to see them at about 14, but 13 is totally acceptable. Alright y'all, I've uh, held the suspense enough, let's go for a ride. I wish it didn't surge as much as it did. But, once you turn the blades on... A little tight, a little tight. Oh, I think I've had the brake off actually to put the blades on. Yeah, gotta turn the brake off, silly. down insanely low probably could adjust the idle on it but most people are going to cut it full throttle as it is as they should all right so that's that's it for this um this one's done very happy with it very very happy with it just the part the little hesitation off the key off the start once it hits that hump it rolls on with it battery's charging trans works deck works um mow in reverse you can do that don't even have to move the key it's fine with me. Um, like I said, all in all, I got, you know, less than $200 in the mower. I'm going to post it for... I'll probably post it for... I was going to post it for $400. I'm going to post it for $450. And 
and it will probably leave the next day um, once you know the spring and whatnot hits so I'm gonna just continue to test it out I'm gonna just blow off the rest of my driveway here because there's no grass around to be cut um, deem it good I think we got a good one here y'all um, thought I had saved the worst for last considering the condition it was in whenever I got it with the trans spring and whatnot but again the trans spring um, put the tire tube in and this thing actually turned out to be easier than quite honestly most of the rest of the mowers that I had in here the worst part about it is I had to cut the blade nuts off of it which y'all saw um, that beige craftsman wasn't bad at all to work on either but um, apart from that I mean everything was here it was easy to work on very full I mean, MTDs it just seems like they're very foolproof truthfully um, didn't have to change the drive belt so drive belt looks a little more involved than what I did um, really the first MTD riding mower I've really worked on worked on I've done others but nothing to the extent of going through them like I did this um, so yeah a nice little three-part series for you on this Troy built Bronco um, the next one coming up and I'll probably have some push mower videos coming after this Troy built um, just because uh, I've got some in the queue but the next one I'm hoping to work on here is and it looks pretty rough the way that it is now but I think it's going to be a pretty easy fix hopefully I don't jinx myself is this um, LT2000 Craftsman that I picked up a little while ago um, everything looks to be good on it. it looks like it just needs a good little refreshing and hopefully I'm right hopefully it's nothing really you know involved or anything like that the nice ones look good sometimes on the surface but can be real bad real quick but yeah Troy built happy with this MTD product uh, don't really say that very much but uh, I will look to uh, work on more of these because they're pretty uh, pretty simple most of, most of the, the time um, from what it seems. Um, so I'll catch y'all in the next video. Thank y'all for watching. Um, again, Instagram at LSMowers09. Same thing on Facebook. Uh, if you like this video, you know, thumbs up, subscribe. Y'all know what to do. I'll catch y'all in the next one.